Charlotte to tip off this final game. Game three on day one of the Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament from Greensboro. The way you shake out the nerves in the first round of the ACC Tournament is moving the ball and playing some good defense early on. Both these teams got to get in a stance and get that sweat going so they can get in a rhythm on the offensive end. There is your starting five for the Virginia Cavaliers, the 11 seed in this tournament. Cam Taylor back healthy. Kamora Johnson, we talked about Paris Clark, such a threat to get to the basket. And Alexia Smith, Sam Brunel, that's starting five for the Cavaliers. The first Johnson. time these two teams met, Jed, Virginia won, and they made 13 threes. So number one on the top of the scouting report for Wake Forest is defending the three-point line. It was an 87-79 win in Winston-Salem for Virginia in that game. You see the Wake starting five. Kaya Harrison helping to run the show in the backcourt along with Elise Williams. Reagan Conley, Scruggs, and Coles on the inside. Four out, one in for Wake Forest. Man-to-man -man defense for Virginia. Seven on the shot clock. Virginia playing some good defense. Johnson saved it. Scruggs. Shot clock did not reset here. Harrison will take the shot. But Cameron Taylor for Virginia, number 20 in white, is active on the glass early. She makes such a difference. Her presence on the floor had to miss four games earlier this season due to injury, but has been back and better than ever down the stretch. A really strong finish by this Virginia team. Virginia has four wins in the ACC over ranked teams. So which Virginia team will show up here? In the ACC, they won more road games than they won home games. <laughs> They're considering this to be a road mentality. Again, another save from Johnson, but nobody there to grab it for Virginia. Well, Coach Mox's team certainly had plenty of opportunities against ranked teams, but these are the four you're talking about, four big wins for this Virginia team, including knocking off fifth-ranked Virginia Tech, the regular season champs in the ACC this past Sunday. And in the three previous wins against ranked teams, the next game they lost. So Coach Mox talked to us about building on a big win, and that's what they're trying to do here today because their last game was that upset over Virginia Tech in a sold-out arena at UVA. Yeah, nearly 12,000 on hand, the most to ever watch a women's basketball game in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Taylor with the turnaround. There's the first points of the game. She is a tough check. She's active. She works to shape up. She shows numbers and hands to the ball, and that is going to be a challenge for Wake Forest. Wake Forest undersized against most teams that they play, certainly missing Jameer Hines, who's had to miss this entire season. And just having trouble even getting a good look. Virginia making things difficult on this defensive end of the floor. Scruggs fights so hard there in the paint. Scruggs has the most tournament experience of any player for Wake Forest, and I expect her to have a big performance here tonight. Scruggs, a senior, fifth-year senior with the Demon Deacons. Look at Taylor. She's a willing passer, and that is a great option. Sam Brunel outside the arc. Brunel, the Notre Dame transfer, started her career with the Irish and had her second year with Virginia, back in her home state from Rutgersville, Virginia, originally. Watch Cameron Taylor working hard inside. Uses that spin to get into the rhythm of her jumper to the midline. And then Scruggs on the glass was fantastic in the next possession for Wake. A touch by Clark nearly put it into the hands of Virginia. Instead, it's back for Wake Forest. The shot clock doesn't reset, and it's just been tough to get into a rhythm offensively. Well, here's what, what, what Virginia has done. They've brought two to the ball. They've been aggressive. Even when they're slipping screens, Wake Forest Two in the trap, making it challenging, and they're speeding up Wake Forest, making them play at an uncomfortable pace. Taylor calling for it. Working on the inside. Scruggs held her ground. Taylor. 
two wins for Wake Forest in the ACC this season. Both of those, though, coming on the road. Good ball pressure. There's a double team to the block. Clark gets back to Williams. A little late. Shot off the front of the rim for Elise. Four out, one in for Virginia as well. Really a good ball screen offensive team. Johnson has time to line up the shot and knock it down. Johnson averaging 15 and a half points per game. That number goes up to 17.7 in conference play and she has been over 21 points per game in her last 10. Wake Forest just trying to find a gap in this suffocating Virginia defense. Harrison does so and draws the foul. I want you to watch Sam Brunel in this series right here. This is Sam Brunel right here. Now watch, she's gonna come over here and she's gonna set a screen. When she sets the screen right here, watch the footwork off the screen by Johnson. Gets her feet under her. Brunel takes two defenders out. Does a great job of knocking down that triple. Brunel heads to the bench now, just picked up her first foul on that last play. That'll put Harrison on the free throw line. Harrison, an excellent free throw shooter, and the best in the ACC, in fact. And this is the first, but she makes about 83% from the line for the season. Wake Forest needs a collective deep breath, like, and a big exhale, okay, because they're fine. They just need to run through their sets, move the ball. You know Virginia's bringing two in their ball screen offense and be ready to make the next play. Jillian Brown, number four, onto the floor along with Odessa Noyan for Virginia. London Clarkson also went off the bench. Clark into Clarkson. And it'll stay with Virginia, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Wake showing some zone in that possession. I think Megan Jebbia has to mix it up. Back to their man-to-man, -man, through the elevator door screens. Brown gets an open look inside for Noyan. Nice slip off that elevator door screen. It's two screens that come together after you go through it, right there at the nail. Just three points so far for the Demon Deacons. Scruggs, I love you. tough basket off the glass. When she catches it deep, she has leverage, and she knows how to use the angles around the rim. She has four of Wake Forest, five points. Clark gets an open lane or look that way. Cole's there to block the shot. Williams. This is the second defender on Elise Williams. They're going to have to use multiple defenders on her. She's had the hot hand for Wake Forest lately. Hasn't gotten anywhere near an open look. Maybe that 1-3 she had. And now Conley steals it back for Wake. No points out of it, though. In this season, what a freshman year. And nine teams from the ACC projected by our Charlie Cream to make it into the NCAA field. Nine teams seated in his projections, not on the bubble, which is impressive for this league. And if you like some numbers, here are a few more. Just give you an idea of what to expect here in Greensboro and why the top four double buy is so important since we've had it in this format. All the winners have had that advantage, not having to play these first couple of days. Well, when you consider the depth of the league and how good offensively this league is, it's a challenge to try to win this tournament if you're not one of the top four seeds. It is tough. You've got to play an extra day, and that is not easy. Clarkson was the Andrews defending there for Wake Forest. Nope. 
points yet for Elise Williams, leading scorer on the season for the Demon Deacons. And pending the status of Elizabeth Kitley, that changes a lot of the projections for teams in this tournament, and certainly Virginia Tech's. Williams, good patience, but not the finishing touch. And Kitley went off injured on Sunday against this Virginia team in Charlottesville. Have not received any updates on her status. As just heard her say it's day to day at well, the moment. Sending our best to the three time ACC player of the year. That's only happened two other times. Elena Beard and uh, Alyssa, Alyssa Thomas. Thomas. I thought you were going to make me. Oh, no, I knew you knew Quizzing me over that. here. I knew you knew that. Yeah, pretty impressive. So it feels like Megan Jebbia searching for the right mix here. Scruggs has been the answer so far. She has six. We're well, coming off the timeout. Much better ball movement. Two good looks. One they convert on, one they miss. And putting Diebel in the lineup. As of late, the 5'8 redshirt freshman, number 12 for Wake Forest, has played really well down the stretch for them. Yeah, and she had one of her best games of the season in the loss against Virginia. Had 17 points in that game, hit three triples. Open look for Clarkson, knocks it down. Really nice, because Scruggs tagged the roller. And what London Clarkson did is stepped into her range to catch it and score. Really nice execution by Virginia. The winner of this game will move on play tomorrow against Florida State, the sixth seed in this ACC tournament. You got a tag with the low man. Now watch this right here. Scruggs oh, finishes at the rim. And then on defense, she's got a tag. Her player is Clarkson. She tags the roller, which means she helps out on the roller to the basket. And that left Clarkson wide open. Well, Elise Williams has a chance to get her game going from the free throw line. It's the first, and we've got two coaches on the sidelines here, Megan Jebbia at Wake Forest and Amaka Agugua Hamilton, Coach Mox for Virginia, both in their second year in charge of the programs. 17 wins last year for Wake Forest. Most in a first year head coach at Wake. And this year it's been a little bit of a building block. And I will say De De Demira Hines is a player that was out most of the year with a tibia stress fracture, and that would have been their anchor on the interior, their post player. She is practicing, so she is getting healthy, but she's certainly not available for this year. And Demira Hines, 6'2", would have been some much needed size inside. I think a lot of people have forgotten about how tough she is on the interior. She would have been a great, great rebounder and a screener in this offense. Five to shoot, Brunel passes it up, goes to the freshman Johnson, all freshman team selection this season. And here's where you have a two for one opportunity if you're awake. That means you're trying to score quickly so you can get the ball back. This is Diebel. A lot of times women's teams don't take advantage of this opportunity. Part of it is because they don't practice it. You gotta practice these situations. A lot of time going off the clock now, eight on the shot clock, Harrison. And it's going to go the other way. Three seconds in the paint. And another turnover for the Deeks. This will be the last possession of the quarter for Virginia. They're going to the horns. Stagger away. Clark. Two defenders on her. Looks for Taylor, who's coming into the game and made her presence felt. Well, they're going to get another opportunity here if Wake Forest would push. Two-point lead for Virginia. Wake the chance to have the last save in quarter number one. Harrison ties us up after the first 10 minutes. Wake Forest, Virginia doing battle. To make sure that it was a good fit. They had a conversation. Cameron decided to sit out that season. And around that time, Coach Mox had also lost her father. So they were really there for one another. Fast forward to senior night a couple of nights ago. And it was really special to see Coach Mox, Cameron Taylor, with her. And instead of having a jersey, Cameron said, I decided to bring my mom along the ride because this journey has been dedicated all to her. I just love that Angel, and Cameron had not played for five months because she was dealing with a lot of issues regarding her mom's health when Coach Mox took the job. 
and I can say that watching Cameron Taylor turn into the beautiful young woman that she has become inside and out, not just her game, because her game is strong. She's a beast on the glass, she's got an incredible motor, but it's her presence off the floor, how much she's matured, and how much she has cared about helping her teammates become better people as well. Brunel also had a very emotional senior day that Angel was just talking about on Sunday where Cam had a picture of her mom out there and Sam had a lot of family in attendance as well. He's really relished the time that she's been able to come back and play with this Virginia team these last couple of years. Well, I'll tell you what, she has improved her stock on the court. She is active, she scores, she rebounds, she communicates on the backside of their defense. She's a tough customer. Debo can't quite finish. So far, it's really been scrubs or bust offensively for Wake Forest. Taylor, off the glass, gets it to go. Six points in the game for Taylor. Tied once again at 13. Open inside, a defensive miscue, and Coles makes Virginia pay. Johnson, also an ACC second team selection, not just freshman team, but second team this year, of what she's done, Clark! herself to the basket, but then Wake Forest didn't give up defensively. Six turnover by the Cavaliers. Williams pulls up, well off. I want you to watch Cameron Taylor right here, okay? Watch what happens. She's gonna see the rebound secured. She's gonna sprint the middle of the floor, and she's gonna get deep position in front of the rim. Watch how she shapes up and seals. Then she goes one strong dribble to the midline and spins away from the help and banks it off the glass. She sprints the floor. She created that opportunity for her because she created that space for Kamora Johnson to be able to make that delivery. Clarkson, basket will not count. Foul on the floor before that putback attempt is what Talisa Green tells us. Dee Kantner, Joe Vasili, Talisa Green, our officiating crew for this game tonight. This is a veteran crew that's been good crews all day today here in Greensboro. Dee Kantner, 40 years on the job. I think she's got a 40 more. She looks like it. The hardest working women in sports. Dee Kantner. Turnover. Williams put it right into the hands of Paris Clark. The sophomore transfer from Arizona lays it in for her first points of the game. And Paris Clark has had a couple of opportunities at the rim. This time she finishes. I'll tell you what, Coach Mox in her second year has really upgraded the talent at Virginia. They, they look good, they're active and engaged. She's got them connected and playing hard. Have a really good young foundation to continue to build upon for the future. And Clark is one of those, just sophomore. Obviously Johnson and Olivia McGee taking this shot here. She had a great game in the regular season. The freshman from Louisa, Virginia, which is near Charlottesville. She had a career high 22 against Wake Forest in February. Fatigue usually shows itself in transition defense. And I would say right now, Wake looks like they're having a hard time getting back and stopping the ball. Scruggs has the double team. She's earned it. Eight points in the game for Scruggs. Seven on the shot. Todd Diebel round and out. Well, Johnson on the push, really putting it on Wake's transition game right now. She gets it back from Clark. Yeah. Timeout, Wake. Good timeout. They need it. Five-point lead for Virginia. Johnson and Clark running the show. It's a ally ACC women's basketball tournament. Winner of this one will extend their season another day to take on the Florida State Seminoles tomorrow. And boy, the paint has been really important for Wake Forest in this game. 12 of their 15 points coming in the paint. 
Need to find another way to pick up a few points, see what they do off the timeout. I thought it was a good timeout by Megan Jebbia because her team looked fatigued. And I love the change by Coach Mox to bring the full court pressure. You just got to match up if you're going to do that once you get across midcourt. Well, there is the first three-pointer to go down for Wake Forest. The Deeks have been 0 for 5 before that triple from Elise Williams. She now has five. Clark had 16 points, six rebounds, was a perfect seven of seven from the free throw line in Virginia's upset of number five Virginia Tech on Sunday. Five on the shot clock. Clear it out, two-man game. Smith takes it herself, comes up short. Williams, fresh off the three, inside to Coles. Well, to hang on to the basketball. How about the transition bucket back to back by Wake Forest? They handle the pressure, they get an open three, and this time they push for a layup. After Virginia's 7 0 run, now a 5 0 run by Wake Forest to tie us at 20. Wake Forest does a good job of moving the ball against the pressure. They get a wide open Elise Williams, their leading scorer. 42 main threes coming into the game. And then in transition, it's Coles who finishes on the block. Good push by the Deeks. Debbie, pregame, Coach Debbie had talked about how fast Virginia is, especially in transition, where they're taking a page out of their book, as you mentioned, the back-to-back -back buckets. But in their huddle, she said, it's transition defense, get back and talk. That's the adjustment. Last game they played them, they outscored them 12 to 6. They're trying to change that. Yeah, it's a good uh, a piece of advice from a coach to her team. And I say that because you can't, you gotta be able to change the rhythm of the game. You have to be able to change in your defense and your push and transition can change the rhythm. We're all tied up, time out Virginia. This Virginia team, Cavs calling a timeout here, Debbie. What are they looking to get right? Well, I think Coach Mox is upset about her team getting too loose on the defensive end, right? They press, they give up a three, then they give up a layup in transition. And look, look Coach Mox ain't no joke, right? I mean, she's going to tell it exactly how it is. She's got a great relationship with her team and her players, and they have a lot of mutual respect between the two. Clarkson, Jillian Brown. Somebody needs to shoot it for Virginia, and they will not get the shot off. Not what you want out of the timeout. Not a good ATO. You can see the frustration on Coach Mox's face. You don't want to upset the pregnant lady over there, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> Eight she and her husband over. expecting their second child. Yeah, she has definitely been battling a lot as Elise Williams knocks down her second triple of the game. So here's what happens to Elise. You got really good defense on her, and you let her get free for a transition three. Then she comes right back, she sees a big basket. Now she's hunting her own shots. Back-to-back -back triples for her. 8-0 run by the Demon Deacons. Take a three-point lead. Clarkson. Coles thought she had the block instead of fouls called. Elise Williams last year made 47 triples. This is her 44th of this year. She's become a really good threat on the top of the floor offensively for Wake. Doing a good job of hunting offense. Virginia on the free throw line for the first time in this game. This is a really good free throw shooting Virginia team too in the late game situation. Their guards can close out a game. Cavaliers were 22 of 29 from the free throw line on Sunday against Virginia Tech. Oh, good screen action. Oh, Diebel gets caught too far <laughs> over. <laughs> she makes it work, though, second time. Good job staying with it. Diebel, a redshirt freshman, played six games last season and was injured. and. Now playing a much bigger role, obviously getting about 24 minutes a game. And now the takeaway. That pass was telegraphed. Taylor came flying in. It does wind up with the Cavaliers. Jillian Brown, transfer from Northwestern, driving to the basket. It's good. She's been really 
a big threat from the three-point line over the last few games, shooting 64% from the last, from three over the last seven. Getting to the rim that time. Pulls off, let's call it a pass, and Scruggs can't finish. Good job by Devo to stop the ball. Five points in the game for Johnson. Clark. Williams playing some defense. Good no call. I like this right here. Slow it down a little bit. Wake Forest a little bit winded. A little slip from Williams, but she recovers. Oh. Big bounce pass into Scruggs, and that is an offensive foul. The basket will not count. Our Nothing But Net crew is here with us in Greensboro all week long. Kelly Graham, look, oh, they're getting pretty over there. Look at Ivory Latta. Kelsey. Coach McGraw is hiding over there somewhere, too. Great to have our Nothing But Net crew here. Yeah, Kelly, Ivory needs all the help she can get over there. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly's stepping up to help out our great makeup crew as well, hair and makeup. Every chance I get to have fun with Ivory Latta, I'm going to take it. <laughs> Taylor. Can't finish with the left. Virginia led by as many as five in this quarter. It's a good job by Wick. They got the two-point lead, shrink the game, slow the game down a little bit here in the quarter court. Williams just too much traffic to get through. She nearly gets back to it. There is a foul, oh, I believe, yes, foul on the floor. Uh, tripping call. It's Kamora Johnson. Her first foul. I really like the way Wake Forest is managing the last three minutes of this quarter. If you don't have early offense, run your stuff. Shrink the game. Shrink the court. That's one of the areas I think Megan Jebby would agree with you that this team has grown throughout the season. Two and two in their last four of the regular season. And nothing doing here. Debo brought the ball down and jump ball the call. Well, three seconds on the shot clock. Virginia in the zone. In the corner, Andrews walked before she could get herself set. Seventh turnover by Wake Forest. Debbie, is there anything more that you'd like to see from Kamora Johnson in particular, just with the big a role that she plays for this Virginia team, does she need to get going a little bit before the half? Well, no, I mean, they're only going to have one more possession here, I would expect. So I think she's managed the team very well and patient. Does have a couple of assists. In fact, those two assists tie the Virginia freshman record. Clarkson lost it. Now Wake Forest. Chance for the final shot and to maintain this lead. Eight points in the game for Elise Williams. Wake's leading scorer on the season. Passes it up to Andrews for three, no. And this one not up in time. So it will be a two point Wake Forest advantage after the first 20 minutes. Again, shorten possession, shrink the game. Score when you have an up. Sometimes you can't always get the uh, telestrator to cooperate the way you want. 
but we get the idea as we get started with the second half and Cam Taylor has her first points of the third quarter. Eight in the game now for the fifth year senior for the Cavaliers. Scruggs had a big first half for Wake Forest. Eight points, four rebounds for the Demon Deacons. Seven on the shot clock. This is much the way the game started. Tough for Wake Forest to get a good look. And then Kamora Johnson there to meet Malaya Coles when she turned around, caused a turnover. Good help inside by Williams. Kamora Johnson, all ACC second team, freshman team selection, five points, four rebounds, couple of assists in the first half. Five to shoot for Virginia. Clark will take the three and knock it down. Five points in the game for Paris Clark. Scruggs up on her toes, kept the feet down though. Two defenders that Coles passed out of and another turnover, a couple of miscues here to start the quarter for Wake. Well, Paris Clark sets up her ability to knock down a triple by driving to the hoop early in the game. It's a nice kick out once it gets, get the ball to get a piece of the paint, whether it's off the bounce or a penetrating pass. And she's gonna check for a heat check there. <laughs> Felt so good about the last one. Not the same result second time around, and then Clark and Williams getting tangled up. At least Williams a little slow to get up for Wake Forest. I mean, for a senior like Elise Clark, this is it, right? This is the game, you know? She tries to cross it over right in front of Paris Clark, who does a really nice job of active hands. You got to give it all you got the last 20 minutes. This could well be the last 20 minutes of the season for both of these teams. Have Virginia sitting at 15 and 14 overall. Perhaps a chance for more postseason, especially if Kamora Johnson keeps playing that way. Boy, the future of this league is so good. I mean, nine teams seated by Charlie Cream anticipated, and then we've got freshmen like this. <laughs> Look at Kamara Johnson, head up, assessing all options, a little change of pace, and a blow by in transition. You go all the way to the hole if nobody stops the ball, and nobody stopped the ball. Scruggs on the free throw line. Taylor picking up her first personal foul. Now Scruggs, just a 52% free throw shooter on the season, has the first. 147 games played at Wake Forest. Amazing. No player wearing a Wake Forest uniform now or before Scruggs has played more. She has the record and just behind her at number two is Kaya Harrison. She's at 144. They go to Horns. Nice slip to the middle of the floor. Big Good. skip pass. And a big offensive rebound. Clark pulling it down. Pretty good setup for Johnson. Williams crossing over. Gets it inside and Wake Forest. This has just been a Thorn in their side in this third quarter in particular. 10 turnovers now for the Deeks. I mean, it's a dead ball turnover. At least they get a chance to set their defense. And it is just a one possession game. So Wake hanging around. Three turnovers and just a couple of free throws for Wake Forest so far in this quarter. A strong drive by Clark. One of the seven. One of the things Coach Mox told us is that Harris Clark is becoming her go-to player on the perimeter. 
Oh, Elise Williams, we know she's the go-to player for Wake Forest. Picked up her 1,000th point earlier this season. But yeah, Clark, you can see that. Gets that little fire in her eye, and she is unafraid to go to the basket. Good luck inside for Taylor. You can't let somebody cut across your face. You got to make them go behind. Five points equals Virginia's largest lead in this game. Just like that, Kai Harrison gets a great cut to the bucket on that 45 degree cut. Spin move from Johnson. Not willing to rush anything. You've talked about how impressed you've been, Debbie, with just the poise of this freshman. Here's Clark to Taylor. Virginia showing how it's done. I mean, Paris Clark did not wait for the ball to get to her. She met the ball and turned the corner and dropped it off inside nicely. And that is going to force a timeout for Megan Jebbia and Wake Forest. Virginia starting to get in the flow. A seven point lead by the Cavaliers after trailing by two at the break. Harris Clark turning the corner in traffic scores. The cut up to the bucket by Cam Taylor and then Clark again dropping it off inside. Well, Virginia has taken the lead here after starting the third quarter strong on a 15-4 run going back to the end of the second quarter. They've made six of their nine shots from the four. Wake Forest just one for three. Some turnover troubles. I mean, a really good set off the timeout by Megan Jebbia. You get the ball to your leading scorer in a position where she can make a play. Taylor. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> she can do that, Debbie. 52% three-point shooter is Cam Taylor. That's her 12th of the season. Yeah. She's shooting 61%. Not a terribly high volume, but that's what her number is in conference play. Coming at you, coming at us. Debbie was ready to protect me, I think. Scruggs had an open look if she'd gone straight up with it. Made it harder on herself, but still makes the basket. She wanted to get to that dominant hand. I love watching Scruggs. I think she plays really hard. She's always undersized, but she knows how to play the angles and she knows how to leverage her advantage. Brown trying to drive on Diebel. There is Scruggs, five foot 10 senior. It's a good play. I mean, she reads defenses so well. She can get off the contact. She can clog up in the gaps and she can make a play like that. Williams shaking her head, not liking first option. Seven on the shot clock, swings it back over to Harrison. From the ACC logo, flat. Gonna make a good choice here. Brown, that'll do. And she does. Four points for Brown, 10 points to lead for Virginia. Angel mentioned it earlier, but these two teams have met each of the last two years in the ACC tournament. Wake Forest winning both of those games, but Virginia leading by 10 now with 3.28 to go in the third. Wake Forest hasn't hit any threes. But boy, is Cameron Taylor starting to catch fire. Big triple in Virginia with a lead. Day one spot left to determine today. Winner of this game will move on to face Florida State. And there's your schedule of games for tomorrow. Get ready. We've got you covered all day long right here on ACCN at the ACC tournament. North Carolina and Miami. Wow, that should be a good one. I'm expecting that to be a really fun one to watch with a lot of offense in that one. <laughs> you like offense? I like Debbie? offense a little bit. <laughs> Taylor somehow keeps the basketball. Five on the shot clock. The Cavaliers have made their last five. This one could be tough. Clark under pressure. Shot clock violation.
Wake Forest is at a time right now in the game where they got to figure out if they want to speed it up or if they want to go possession for possession but get some stops on the defensive end. It's not time to start pressing yet. Can they speed it up with this personnel? I mean, they can if they want to, but they can't turn the ball over, and they got to be able to make some baskets. They can't trade baskets with Virginia. Have to hurry now. Two, one on the shot clock, and that, that is a, both teams running out of time. That was a lot of contact. And that's a foul that Scruggs will wish she could take back. It's her third. I mean, watch this right here. There's a lot of contact on that play. Turnover, Wake Forest. Shot from Johnson falls through. She has nine. I mean, the measure of patience for a rookie early in her career. It's been outstanding to watch. She has really gotten a lot better, Kamora Johnson. Good slip, good job. Needing the slip at the rim. Scruggs, Riley Turkoff. Freshman from New Jersey into the game. Now Williams has to shoot, but that's gonna be a foul and it is against Virginia. 0.5 seconds on the shot clock. Watch the footwork of Kamora Johnson. She gets the flip and then she spins, knowing that she's got a clear out and a one-on-one -on -one against a smaller defender. It's a smart play. So fresh 20 seconds to work with after that foul. And then an offensive foul on the screen, Coles picks up her second. This is a really dangerous time. As I mentioned, the last couple of trips, turnovers for Wake. And Virginia has capitalized. Scruggs, by the way, does just have two fouls. It was incorrectly listed at the halftime box score that she had two in the first half. Does have two now, not three. So that's important to note. Step back from Johnson. Beautiful. Are you starting to really like this kid? Because <laughs> oh. I am. <laughs> I've been on the bandwagon for a yeah. while. And if you're just tuning in and watching Johnson, who is a Charlottesville, Virginia native, she stayed yep. home to play for Coach Mox, a McDonald's All-American that wanted to help restore that Virginia program to some of its former glory. Taking some big steps this year. Williams had it on her hip. And the foul is called. I mean, she takes her defender into the paint and scores off the bounce. Now she uses her footwork and her ball fake to get separation from the defender. Ladies, I know you'll like this, and Debbie, I know that you were building a list of the young guards in this league, and it is in great hands. When you're looking at Cora Johnson, how balanced her game is, 12 points, seven rebounds, she has four assists, and with her third assist tonight, she became UVA's freshman assist record holder as well. So making history for herself and such a bright light for them to continue to move forward. You talked about Coach Mox, which she's building with Virginia, and it's really in good hands with Kamora. I agree, Angel. I, I mean, I've known Coach Mox for a long time. I watched her coach two teams at Missouri State to the Sweet 16. Coach of the year twice in that league. WBCA Maggie Dixon Rookie of the Year coach. I mean, she's got the skill set on the sideline. There's three pieces. There's recruiting, which everybody spends all their time on, okay? <laughs> then there's practice, preparing, and making your players better. And then there's in-game adjustments. She checks all three boxes. It was, a, it was a, a brilliant hire by athletic director Carla Williams. And 
in-season adjustments as well. This Virginia team has struggled in the third quarter. Now here they are outscoring Wake Forest 23 to 8 in the third. 4.6 seconds left on the clock. Foul is called. And that's on Noyan, her second. And so Williams will go back to the free throw line. Good way for the Demon Deacons to start tacking on a couple more points from the line. They're four of four in this half, seven of eight in the game. Two more from the line for Williams. That's four straight, 14 points total. But this quarter has belonged to Virginia. No icing on top of Kamora Johnson. Doing some damage here in the third quarter for the Cavs. Set a deficit, and then there's the freshman, Kamora Johnson. He was so good with the basketball, making decisions, seeing the floor, setting up her teammates, and calling her own number. 16 points for those two players in a big third quarter for Virginia. In fact, the Cavaliers equaled their first half total, which was a season low for a first half in the third quarter. To use a baseball reference, their battery is really good because they're strong yeah. up the middle in the middle third with their point guard play and their post play. Beyond that. Virginia determined to keep up this good momentum they carried here into Greensboro. Coming off their fourth top 25 win. In fact, it was a top five win on Sunday against Virginia Tech on their home floor. I mean, that's a really good, a really well executed play without the finish. Because what they did is they cleared out the whole side. That's an ISO on the block. You got to catch that and score it. Wake with some work to do here in the fourth quarter. Seven on the shot clock for Williams. Gets around Clark and gets her two. She catches in the short corner and she faces up and then she rips it through. I love it. 16 points for Williams. She's averaged over 25 over the last three games. Really been picking up her scoring down the stretch for the Demon Deacons. Lawson. Well, watch the footwork right here. Catch, face. Okay, go over the top, swipe it through on the bottom, and get through the contact. It's a really nice play by Elise Williams. And this Wake Forest team coming off a game where they played on the road at NC State on Sunday, and they were down big, had a dismal first half, but had a big third quarter in that game against NC State to come back and make a game of it late. Wolfpack wound up hanging on getting the victory, but Wake Forest is not a team that's going to go away quietly. Taylor. A little short on the turnaround, and then Lawson came flying in. I mean, Scruggs is better, okay? Scruggs has given up some size inside. 5'10", maybe. And Cam Taylor, 6'2". She's just staying between her and the basket, forcing Cam Taylor to make a shot over her and then turning and boxing. That's how she drew that foul. Third personal foul on Cam Taylor. Andrews left open for three. Scruggs keeping it alive for the Demon Deacons. Williams crossing over through traffic. So run by the Demon Deacons, and now Virginia has the first points in the quarter. Diebel, Scruggs, he dribbles right into the post up. Scruggs kicks it back out to Diebel. That's a really good decision by Scruggs. Timeout on the floor, and Virginia with an eight-point lead, but Wake Forest coming. 
Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament is brought to you by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better off with an Ally. Doing a nice job, pick and pop. Hard roll to the middle, score inside, and Kamora Johnson, the freshman point guard. They had 11 combined points in the first half. They have a combined 17 points here and are the difference in Virginia's ability to pull away and make this a double-digit lead. Now Wake is battling back. You can come from my job with those reads like that, Debbie. It's a big bow moment. Handled well. Wake four, so as you were starting to say, if I so rudely interrupted you, on a 9-2 run going back to the third quarter. Virginia led by as many as 15 in the third. We now trim down to eight. Johnson. Big stop by Wake. Now they gotta execute. They're in this game. It is a three-possession game. And they've been playing better lately in February. They've been in more games at the end of the season. Had no ACC wins up until February 22nd. Got that on the road at Pitt, then one on the road at Georgia Tech. Kept it very close at home. Lost by four to Clemson and then lost at NC State in the last game. Those are the last four for Wake Forest. I think one of the problems for Wake all season is, you know, who's your go-to? And they're playing without size. Look how small they are on the floor right now. They don't have anybody over six foot on the court. Most nights they play small, so you got to play fast. But they don't have the depth to do that. Elise Williams with 16 points leading the Demon Deacons in this game. There was a kick. Is that what Joe Vasily yes. was indicating? <laughs> 20 on the shot clock for uh, Virginia and Olivia uh, McGee. I like number 33, Brunel, on this play right here. A little pick and pop action. Elevator door screen to skip over the top. Pass came up a little short for Brown. And the reset goes inside to Noyan. So there's another stop. Back to back stops for Wake. You can't keep the ball on the top of the floor. You got to dive down below the first row line. Turkov. Her dad was a. Shot put champion in the ACC at the University of Virginia. And a freshman playing against her dad's alma mater tonight with Wake Forest. A little too much body on that play. And that now is three fouls on Scruggs. Here you see Riley Turkoff, her dad. Longtime coach now, Coach Turk, as he's known in New Jersey. And that brings us to a little bit of a hoop scoop. There you go, Michael, the ACC champ for the Cavaliers. I mean, Scruggs has done a good job staying out of foul trouble tonight. She has six DQs on the season. But that's what happens when you're playing undersized against those bigs all the time, battling on the inside. How that, about the balance right there of Taylor, too, not to go over the back on that rebound and still somehow come away with it? Cameron Taylor is liking that pick and pop action, and this is what she does. She can get in the paint and score over the top of most players. It's been over two minutes, though, without a basket for Virginia. Andrews from the corner. That's a big one. A two possession game. Just ask NC State. This Wake Forest team does not go away. They made the Wolfpack really work for their victory at Reynolds on Sunday. Kamara Johnson right here has got to take over for her team. Out an open lane, goes to her right. Williams looking to get up the floor in a hurry. Diebel can't make it back to back threes and both players fighting for the rebound. Taylor is going to get called for the foul, her fourth. I like the take by Diebel in transition and Cameron Taylor late on a closeout. Andrew sticks the triple. And then Kai Harrison battling on the weak side. Draws that foul against Cameron Taylor. Taylor's going to have to take a seat. You could tell she was really trying to be careful the last couple of times she was going in there to rebound. This time she does pick up foul number four. And she's fouled out of five basketball games this season. Including the regular season matchup against Wake Forest, although that was her first game back after missing four with injury. McGee. 
Noya, no, thought for sure she had it. Virginia one for 11 so far this quarter. Cavaliers have really been up and down. Their lowest scoring first half all season, and then they put up 23 in the third. Now getting outscored eight to two here in the fourth. Scruggs short. Harrison, there she is again, flying high, getting the rebound. Well, good job by Andrews to crash. Remember, this is an 87-79 game, the first time these two teams <laughs> met. This is what happens in a postseason. Possession shrink, the court shrink, and there's no lack of confidence in Elise Williams. <laughs> the basket looks big if you're Elise Williams. 19 points right now. She's knocked down three triples. It's a 15-2 Demon Deacon run. And Wake Forest has put some significant game pressure on the Cavaliers. Working off that scrug screen. Brunel doesn't come with a long enough closeout. And Elise Williams, that's her third triple. Two in the first half, and that's her first here in the second. <laughs> you mentioned that scrug screen, talking to Megan Jebbia. That scrug screen is a big part of what makes this offense flow. Well, and Elise Williams right now, uh, in the last three games, has averaged 25 points. And these teams, as we said, know one another well here, especially in the ACC tournament. Virginia has lost each of the last two meetings to the Demon Deacons. Wake trying to make it three in a row and move on. Kai Harrison's got a big responsibility here, keeping Kamara Johnson in front, and that ball pressure results in a turnover. 13th turnover by Virginia. Andrews. Elise Williams has got to want the ball here. Wake with a chance to tie or take the lead. Clark playing some good defense. Eight on the shot clock, Williams. Has 19 for the Demon Deacons. Oh! Off the front of the rim, but the rebound goes to Debo. Andrews to the basket, no! And Cameron Taylor did not want to commit that foul there. Andrews had a step on her. Now Taylor back out there with the four fouls. That would get Cameron Taylor on the block. She's been tough to handle. There she is, right there, shaping up, asking for the pass to go to, to the wing. She's got the size advantage. Nobody weight can put on her that can match her. Brown is fouled. She'll have some free throws coming. Diebel thought she had herself set in defensive position. So Virginia going to the line, and the Cavaliers a very good free throw shooting team. 77% of their free throws have gone in for the season. That's the second best mark in the ACC. Well, it's the end of the game, so sometimes the focus can shift. Megan Jeppia has got to feel good about the game pressure she's put on Virginia. And that is the first point for Virginia in over five minutes. Still a one possession game. Scrubs. Three defenders around her. Good defense. They take it away. They've been bringing two to the block all game. Clark. Johnson. Had Taylor rolling. Now goes inside. Taylor with the left. And then she takes herself out of the play by falling. You got to stay on your feet. A lid on the basket for the Cavaliers in this quarter. And Elise Williams and Wake Forest coming at them. Good take off the bounce by Williams. She knew they had numbers. 19 points for Elise Williams, a player that we knew we were going to have to keep an eye on. That Angel said before tip-off would be the one to lead this Wake team if they were to get past Virginia once again in the ACC tournament. 
Ladies, yes, Virginia has won six of their last eight games, but when we were talking with Coach Mock, she talked about the next challenge and then playing with a lead, going back to their last matchup against the Demon Deacons. They were up as many as 18 points. She said it was Elise Williams that made the charge, allowing them to get back into the game. We're seeing a lot of that tonight as well. They had their largest lead at 15. Does Wake Forest have enough from the bench, though, to seal it? We'll see, Angel. Two minutes to go, a two-point game. That was the first miss for Williams from the free throw you, line. You just want to keep them in front and rebound right here. You want to force a tough two, a contested shot, and there's a great steal by Harrison. Tremendous defense as she sensed that the ball was coming to Kamora Johnson, wouldn't let it get there. This is a matchup that Harrison can win. Williams. Two oh, and the Browns. Andrews! And one! The Demon Deacons tie it with the basket, can take the lead with the free throw. I mean, this is a big time crash from the weak side. The guards are getting it done in the paint. The guards are on the glass for Wake Forest. Alyssa Andrews, the six foot junior, does a great job of working and staying in the play. Demon Deacons retake the lead. This is the first time they have led since halftime when it was 25-23. Six points for Andrews, all of them coming in the fourth quarter. Brown. Boy, the Cavs could have used that triple. Oh, good pass by Williams. Instead, they have to get back in defensive transition. How about that move from Kyle? In. That's Elise Williams. Sees the floor, throws it ahead to the fastest player on the court. Virginia needs to be patient right here. They got time. She traveled. Baby, it's got to be so hard to be patient when you've just had so much of a struggle to get your offense going in this fourth quarter. Virginia only has one timeout. That's why Coach Mox didn't want to call it. But the advance pass by Williams to Kai Harrison. Two really good guards in this league that have been playing together for a long time and have had success winning here in Greensboro. Wake Forest. Great balance, Alyssa Andrews from the deep corner, and then it's Williams with a triple. The rebounding on the interior and the and one opportunity for Andrews. Then this play right here, that is the vision of Elise Williams to pitch it ahead. So that all Kai Harrison had to do was run under it and lay it in. There's something about Wake Forest here in Greensboro. There sure is. Demon Deacons have won at least one game in each of the last four. They made it to the quarterfinals in three of the last four ACC tournaments. And Wake coming in as the 15 seed. Bottom of the standings, but taking it to the 11 seeded Cavaliers right now with under a minute to play. Both teams with one timeout remaining. Virginia has no fouls to give. And they do commit the foul here. Williams, an 82% free throw shooter. I don't think that's what Coach Mox wanted. I think she wanted a hard trap, look for a steal. You had Elise Williams backed up all the way to the midcourt line. Yeah, she looks frustrated, shaking her head on the sideline as Williams will head back to the free throw line where she is 7 of 8 today, 20 points in the game. Well, Coach Mox is anticipating that Williams, as you mentioned, is a good free throw shooter, is going to make him, so she's going to get Brunel in for an offensive possession. And Sam Brunel is a really good three-point shooter. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, they don't need a three. They need to attack the bucket and get the best shot available. I put a little token pressure to keep the ball in front. Just three points in the fourth quarter for Virginia, and perhaps a little bit of history repeating itself here as Wake Forest has had the Cavaliers number the last couple of years in the ACC tournament. 
the winner of this game will move on to play tomorrow to take on the sixth seeded Florida State Seminoles. Now, Virginia actually won at Florida State in the regular season, but they've got to get there. Seminoles swept Wake Forest in their two meetings, but Wake right now just staring down that spot, the opportunity to stamp that Demon Deacon sticker on the bracket in the back. There's some really good games on a Thursday. When you look at the teams that are in this league, nine of which are expected to make the NCAA tournament, including <laughs> Florida State and Brooke Wyckoff. <laughs> She's having a good old time over there yeah, watching this game. Great conversation with Brooke today about her best moment in the ACC tournament, and she had to point to her senior year in 2001, where they won a game here. It was the first time they had won. She gives a lot of credit to Sue Semrau, who I know is really proud of what Brooke has done at Florida State. So pay attention to those timeouts. One remaining for Wake Forest, none left for Virginia. And I'm telling you right now, Brooke Wyckoff's hoping for overtime. That's what she wants. She wants Tire to play out. another five minutes. <laughs> Wake Forest has to keep the ball in front, and they got a rebound. Brunel. Taylor wants the ball, and she was open. McGee opted for the three, and Elise Williams is not going to relinquish the basketball. If she gets it, she'll say, come at me. As we mentioned, 82% free throw shooter. She'll take her chances on the line, and that's Clark's fourth foul. Virginia outscored. Wake Forest, 23 to 10 in the third quarter. The fourth quarter has been the swing by Wake. They knocked down some triples. They've been on the glass. That turned the game around. And you start to see some of that emotion creeping in. You got to look at Cameron Taylor, fifth year forward. Coach Mox and is so proud of what her team has done to finish strong this season, but thinking this could well be the end unless they find some magic in these final 35 seconds that has eluded them for the remainder of this quarter. It's taking a long time to get a three off. Now you got to have a three. Johnson launches a deep three. And the game just really ended early for Virginia. It has been all Wake Forest in this fourth quarter. Not just Cam Taylor, but London Clarkson and Sam Brunel, also graduate students for, for Virginia. 20 seconds left of the season, potentially, for one of these two teams. Only one can move on to take on the Seminoles. No timeouts remaining now. 20 seconds left in the game. Virginia won for 15 this quarter. Virginia had an 11 point lead at the end of the third quarter. Wake Forest has a six point lead here at the end of the fourth. What happened? What an effort by Wake. Well, I just told you they hit a bunch of threes. They got on the glass. They got enough stops. I think Virginia's shot selection was an issue. Wake Forest also has taken advantage of getting to the free throw line. Five of seven from the line in this quarter alone, 14 for 17 for the game. Virginia has only shot four free throws in the entire game. Well, the fight in Wake Forest was outstanding in the fourth quarter. They never gave up. Yeah, Virginia, as you mentioned, really turned it on, looked like they were in control in that third quarter, led by as many as 15. And Wake Forest has found a way back. Now Paris Clark head to the bench. That is her fifth. She's in no hurry. That's a tough way to finish for Virginia, not indicative of the strides forward that this team has taken this season. Well, Virginia didn't look like a team that had four wins over ranked teams, and Wake Forest didn't look like a team that has six wins. And that's what happens in March. <laughs> 
Game slippage is a real thing. Tightening up the details is a really important part of March. 11 points in the fourth quarter for Elise Williams. Cam Taylor lost her shoe, made the three. But very well too little, too late for Virginia. They Five got a, points. They got a foul. Have to catch the ball first. Looked like that would be it. Didn't hear a whistle, but a foul yeah. was called. And the free throw shooting, an area of improvement for Virginia, or for Wake Forest, excuse me, last year. They shot 66% as a team. They've improved that to nearly 73% this season. And free throws have been a big part of what they've been able to do in this game tonight. Harrison has six in the game. And Kamora Johnson is going to see her ACC tournament come to an end with a banked shot from midcourt. So that will make the final score 58-55, but Wake Forest pulling off the win.